pre-order my book, American Evil, in the link below. This year has been crazy for video games. You know, people have been trying to sell you on the narrative that Helldivers 2 is successful or that Pokemon was going to be play replaced by a knockoff property in Pal World. You know, like it's been a crazy year for games. You know, people have been desperately like bending over backwards to try and pretend Switch isn't doing very well. And uh, they've been ignoring the reality that the console is well on its way to becoming the best selling console ever made. They're, they've been downplaying the success of games like Princess Peach Showtime and Unicorn Overlord. And uh, they are just ignoring the fact that PlayStation and Xbox are on fire right now and yet have had bomb after bomb after bomb after bomb. Like, I don't even have to tell you how badly Helldiver, uh, not Helldivers, uh, Hellblade, Senua's Revenge or whatever. I don't know what she's getting revenge on, but like, you know, I don't have to tell you how badly Ninja Theory's newest game has flopped, right? In fact, like, I revel in the fact that, like, uh, that Ninja Theory is going to get shut down. You know, I, I'm ecstatic about this because, you know, I don't you remember when, when the game journals tried to convince us all that, like, oh, actually, the, the Ninja Theory's Devil May Cry was way better than uh, Bayonetta 3. Like, again, fuck Ninja Theory. Fuck everyone who's, works, who's ever worked there. Fuck the gaming industry. Like, they deserve to get shut down. I didn't even know that Microsoft acquired them. You know why? Because I don't care, okay? They are... They are complete trash and don't deserve to be acknowledged or respected at all, right? So in this array of just like mediocrity that's been this year of video game releases that are not on Nintendo consoles, there has been a really interesting one that I have not seen a lot of people talk about. You know, the reality of the situation was I was expecting Tekken 8 to be super, super popular you know, the best fighting game of the generation, for sure. I had it pre-ordered on PC. I was expecting it to do it reasonably well. I thought 7 was reasonably good for what it was, right? You know, 7 is interesting because, you know, I, I said this last gen. Like, it felt like Tekken was the only major video game, fran uh, fighting game franchise that did not shit the bed in some way, right? Tekken, like, actually came out and delivered a proper Tekken game with 7. But with 8, looking at what they've done with that, it feels like 7 is going to be the last one they've ever, they'll, they'll ever make. Because what exactly does 8 add that improves over 7? Is it the roster of characters? Is it the mechanics? Is it the visuals? Like, no. Like, the reality is 8 is, like, the the same game we've gotten with more microtransactions, more iffy creative decisions, and people are getting tired of it. You know, we are entering a dark age of fighting games because, you know, newbies can't get into the genre, and uh, pros are, like, gatekeeping people, like, pretty successfully. Like, you can't go online and play a game of Tekken because you're just going to get wrecked. Like, you're going to have to take a college course and how to, like, not get not get beat up by law in order to like defend yourself in those games. And that's part of the fun. That's part of the appeal. But like, again, we're kind of reaching the point where it feels like fighting games are becoming increasingly niche. You know, the, the era where like people would like get fired up over Evo and like major fighting game tournaments is over, right? The quality of these games is going down. You know, Mortal Kombat one was a disaster. Guilty Gear Strive was a disaster. Uh, you know, Street Fighter six was a disaster. And it seems like Tekken eight is no different. And, uh, looking at, like, the Steam numbers, it's interesting how, right now, Tekken 8 has, like, what, like, 4,000 people playing the game on Steam, and, like, it's getting outdone by, like, a, ran a random Ultimate nin uh, Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm game. <laughs> like, that's how that's how badly Tekken 8 is getting wrecked. Now, like, Steam, uh, Steam player counts are by no means, like, an adequate representation of what a player base for a, for a game actually is, but I do think this, the trend is set, though. Like when I when Tekken Seven came out, like I was hearing about it all the time. You know, people were were speculating on like the character roster, uh, the the DLC, and like the additions, talking about how how good it was. Like uh, Tekken Seven did have an audience, and I don't see that with Tekken Eight. You know, I don't see that with Street Fighter Six. Like it feels like these games came and went without any with no real fanfare at all. You know, we can we can like make fun of Pal World for its like two weeks of relevancy all we want, but in a lot of ways, I think it's more telling that a lot of these major tentpole PlayStation properties, stuff like Tekken, uh, are falling by the wayside. 
And, and it's really interesting to see where the gaming industry is right now. You know, I'm seeing people like try and chill Neil Druckmann as an Artur, uh, video game developer. It's not going to happen. Nobody's ever going to see him that way because nobody actually likes The Last of Us, right? Like, I, I'm looking at, like, what all these developers are doing, and I'm just like, wow, I really couldn't care less because... I know, like, the easiest way to screen for quality in this industry is just see if a game has a Nintendo release. Because if it's releasing on Nintendo hardware, that means the developers are aware, like, believe that the game can compete with what Nintendo puts out. And what we're seeing increasingly from these non-Nintendo pushing uh, franchises, you know, stuff like uh, Yakuza and stuff like that, is that... Uh, they keep making excuses to not put games on Switch. And I, I do think a major reason why Tekken 8 has failed, especially in Japan, is because Harada has refused to port the game on Switch. You know, like, I do think that this has completely crippled the franchise. There will be no recovery from this period. Like, they're doing the same thing that Square Enix did in uh, 2002 with, like, all those endless, like, Final Fantasy, like, uh, PlayStation exclusives, like doing that just dilutes the brand, right? You had that major success with Final Fantasy VII, and then what you do? You put out Final Fantasy VIII, which was a disaster. You put out nine, like uh, before, uh, like uh, you you announced ten before releasing nine, which killed the sales for nine. And ten was like the most popular game you would ever put out. But like after that point, like the the entire company went downhill. You know they. They had to merge with Enix. They had to. They had to do all this stuff, and that that led to where we're at now, where like the company has become a shell of its former self. Where even its legendary cash cow, Final Fantasy VII, is not able to keep itself relevant. And I do think a major reason for that is because the audience for Seven are older now. You know, the people who grew up with these games have moved on with their lives, and people don't necessarily understand the appeal of Cloud, Tifa, and Eris, right? They don't understand what made Final Fantasy VII so special, and they never will, because in a lot of ways, they have their own things to play and enjoy on Nintendo consoles. And, and that is, like, the reality of the situation, I think, is that, like, over time, RPGs have made their home on Nintendo consoles, right? You know, the industry's attempts at trying to control, like, the JRPG industry to try and, like, make it PlayStation exclusive, like, oh, you only get RPGs on PlayStation. That entire thing, like, blew up in their face, and, like, without them even realizing it. And I think we're in the process of that happening with fighting games, because what is the biggest fighting game franchise in the world right now? Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. You know, all these other franchises, they want their characters in Smash for that easy promotion, right? They want the Kazuyas in Smash. They want the Terry Bogards. They want, like, they want that, right? Uh, but they won't release the games on Nintendo hardware. Like, what sense does that make? Like, again, I don't think people realize just what a big shot in the foot that is. You know, putting Kazuya in Smash, you know, introducing him to a bunch of people that have never heard of him before... And then having to deal with the fact that like, oh, Tekken 8's coming out, I'm gonna I'm gonna go see Kazuya's game. Wait, it's not on Switch? It's not on Nintendo? Well, okay, well, I'll just wait for it to get ported then. Like, it is unthinkable for most people to have a character in Super Smash Bros. not be available on Nintendo platforms. Like, this attempt the industry has had in trying to like mitigate the the impact of Nintendo and their their characters has completely failed is what we're seeing here and, and I, I do think this is like a, we're in the end stage of that like we're at the uh, the end stage of like Sony's like monopoly control over the industry like they're desperately trying to cling on to it but I do think like the way forward is clear like I do think uh, for better or for worse Nintendo is going to destroy their enemies and they are going to conquer the console space and you're already seeing people cope and seethe about that like oh pc will save us oh cloud gaming will save us oh the iphone will save us but like you know the iphone is a object that literally everybody owns right literally everyone has one right and yet still didn't stop the switch you know like literally a hundred percent market saturation you know everybody in your target audience has one and yet it didn't make Nintendo consoles obsolete, you know, like, it's it's just not going to happen, guys. Like, Nintendo already has their their demographic that's separate from phones, and uh, that group of people is going to continue to grow and expand over time. Like, the idea that, like, phones or PC 
is going to make like consoles obsolete is completely retarded, right? People really don't like to admit that the reason PlayStation and Xbox aren't doing well is because of poor decisions by PlayStation and, and Xbox and not because of an inherent failure with consoles, right? Like it has nothing to do with consoles being obsolete and more to do with the fact that uh, the industry didn't innovate and they didn't grow at the times. So, you know, they really coasted off of this idea that like uh, mature games for mature gamers, they took that idea and they just ran it to the ground until people didn't care anymore. You know, like back in the day, you would buy a brand new console and expect to see like, you know, stunning new visuals and brand new games and like exciting new possibilities. And you don't really get that anymore. You know, now you get like Forspoken, you get Final Fantasy 16, you get Street Fighter 6, you know? <laughs> you know, you get Baldo's Gate 3. Like you get all this crap that nobody actually plays or cares about, right? Uh, to me, I think... Um, I, I think uh, developers will not be able to con continue this facade. You know, they will not be able to, like, continue tricking people into thinking that, like, our audience isn't on Nintendo hardware. Like, it's just obviously not true. Like, it's crazy how often we've seen, like, uh, developers behind games like the Ma the Mana franchise and the Yakuza franchise and the, the Tekken franchise come out and say, we're never going to develop for Switch. We're, we're never going to partner with Nintendo. And, like, um, people try to make excuses for them, but it completely falls apart like every time they do it you know like how often are you going to see people like uh bring up the the yakuza one and two ports on on wii u when like negoshi was straight up like giving interviews like saying that like no matter how well the game does we will not continue supporting nintendo consoles right like uh that version of the game existed i think to justify like continued partnerships with sony to share shareholders right like it is something they can point to to uh, to justify why Yakuza does not do well on Nintendo consoles, even though that like that game was sent out deliberately sent out to die, right? I um, uh, they can't keep doing this, right? Like I do think it's it's really interesting seeing the stuff that is coming out on Nintendo console. You know, out of nowhere we got the Metal Gear Solid games. We're getting like Sparkster next month. You know, I'm not seeing anybody talk about that. Like, we're getting, like, a lot of cool stuff coming out. Like, a lot of these classic games, and uh, nobody notices or cares. They just want to, like, keep up this, like, uh, coping and seething about, like, and I don't know, uh, like, whatever. But uh, what it all comes down to is that Nintendo always wins. 